In the morning, when the world still half belongs to the stars, the sun returns and his light falls on all men, rich or poor, fortunate or unfortunate, old or young. Each man, an individual unique in himself, must make the most of his day. Each life is a kingdom set apart from all others. Each of us, a separate being, a single man under the sun. A farmer's job seems like a lonely one with uh, only his dog for companionship and the nearest neighbor a mile down the road. His world is filled with animals and earth, and days spent far from other men and other ways of life. Amid the farms are small communities and homes built by many generations. In this home, a lonely woman rises long before her neighbors and descends to rooms which were home for her family. This was once a home whose mornings were filled with the shouts of children, clattering of dishes, calls for breakfast. Now, just memories. The sun rises late in the city, for it must creep over the buildings and window ledges as well. And in one corner of the city, loneliness can be found in the heart of a small boy. For him, very few dreams ever become reality. Already he's begun to dismantle the bridges that link him with others, to separate himself from a world that seems not to keep its promises. In the suburbs, as each day begins, there are many successful business and professional men who, in the coming hours, once more will face the loneliness of making important decisions. Decisions which bring fear and uncertainty, the sensation of being entirely alone. Even a boy, given everything by loving parents, may in his heart still feel set apart from all others. in the same way, it's not unusual to find a high school student who feels totally alone in the presence of his friends and fellow students. The first day of a new college man is strange and dismaying. Any man at any time in his life may feel that he is alone. Being with others is not the same as being a part of others. But is a man ever really alone? The question has been asked for centuries, and there have been many answers. 350 years ago, the poet and clergyman John Donne spoke these few unforgotten words. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. All men are linked together because there's a force within each man which involves him with all others. That force is not always easy to see, but it's there in every man. The newspapers often carry the story. A child lies suffering in a hospital, and a hundred or a thousand strangers reach out to touch and console. It's done freely without seeking recognition or reward. When 
there is a need, a man hears something within him, an inner voice urging him to act, to help. The inner voice might be called conscience, or it might be described as the undying part of a man which is linked to God and to all other men. It's enough to say that the inner voice is there and that it will always speak. Very often the inner voices of men join in a mighty chorus. And then on the outskirts of the city or village there may be seen signs such as these. There are many names, but each stands for the same idea that no man, rich or poor, fortunate or unfortunate, old or young, need ever stand alone. Each has its story, but in each men work together, building a force in the world that draws men together. Such a force and such a story is Kiwanis, which began more than 50 years ago in Detroit, Michigan. It was intended to be just a pleasant luncheon group for businessmen, a way to meet for the sake of good fellowship between the men of the community. Very few at first suspected that the luncheon club might become something far more important. When the active men of a community spend time together, an inner power is ignited. The desire to work together to serve others in a community freely without seeking recognition or reward. And so, before long, the luncheon club had community service projects going. And the word spread to other men, like sparks rising on a breeze. Kiwanis became an organization devoted to the good of each community, a rallying point for active, giving men. By its 50th birthday, it numbered more than 275,000 members and was growing steadily. It has come to stand for something very definite in our modern world. Eternal God, grant us a vision of thy being that we might work in thy spirit and magnify thee with our deeds. Amen. Kiwanis has faith in what the individual citizen can accomplish in his community when he sees a need and acts to do something about it, no matter what that need may be. Each man's efforts are multiplied as he works alongside others. Nearly a third of a million men with that faith in themselves, dedicated to the conviction that no man and no community should go without help when something needs to be done, is a mighty force in the world, a force which can work wonders. Not only in one club, but in thousands of clubs throughout the free world, a Kiwanian can regularly give all the best that he has and do so with other active men in warm fellowship. When men sing together, they join one another in a special way. Fellas, we're going to hear from Bob Murray, a member of our program committee, uh, concerning next week's Ladies' Night. Bob, if you will, please. President Bell, fellow Kwanians, I want to remind you that next week for Ladies' Night, we're going to have one of the finest programs of the year. Now, the official title of this program is the Grand Canyon Area. By means of colored slides and stereophonic sound, we're going to see the Petrified Forest and Painted Desert, Bryce Canyon, Zion Canyon, and the Grand Canyon. Now, it's vital that we have a good turnout for this meeting, so get a date with a little woman, and if you haven't already done so, please sign up on this sheet. Thank you. Chairman Bill, let's hear the work of the Boys and Girls Committee. President Sherm, fellow members, 
I'd like to report on two projects. The junior bowling tournament is now well underway, and we're beginning to make plans for recreation building at the boys and girls camp. And now, fellow Kiwanians, to carry us along for the rest of the meeting, I would like to give you your vice president and program chairman, Charlie Duncan. Charlie? President Bill, Kiwanians, I'd like to call upon our treasurer, Blaine Groove, to bring us a report of our annual auction. Blaine? Vice President Charlie, fellow Kiwanians, we had a most successful auction sale last week. Our auction grossed us $1,209. Our food stand grossed us $125 for a total of $1,334. Deducting estimated expenses of approximately $100 would leave $1,234 net, which will wind up in our foundation scholarship account. Thank you. Kiwanians believe that farm and city must understand each other and work together. And county fairs provide the finest opportunity for the two groups to do just that. The city dweller who comes close to farming finds there's a richness which no factory can produce. A display of God's handiwork and man's individual accomplishment. And he finds always that his roots are deeper in the soil than he had imagined. Kiwanis is active in such programs because it knows that farm and city cannot live without one another. Judging a contest, giving a prize, sponsoring a for each or future farmers club, these men actively show their belief that the future of our farms depends on the interest and effort given to youth, not only by the farmer but by the city man as well. And for the Kiwanians who participate, this smile is their reward. A beautiful farm with a bumper crop gives a feeling of security, of pride, of accomplishment. For something about the land makes contact with the inner man in any man. All we are or ever will be comes from the land. We must all guard it, conserve it, leave it richer than we found it. Most of all, we must work for it together. In one Midwestern town, the Kiwanis-sponsored key club from the high school and Circle K of the college join forces weekly to distribute prayer cards to each table, not missing a single restaurant in town. It was a simple effort, but carried with it the personal rewards that come to men at any age when they work to better their community. Kiwanis believes strongly in support of churches. So with the cooperation of a local printer, a car and driver, three key clubbers set to work. distribute church bulletins for a 20-mile radius around their town. It's an invitation to strangers to join them in worship.
This young member of a key club and his fellow key clubbers do much in many ways to build a better world at their school and in their community. They drive the elder citizens of the community to church on Sunday mornings. No one, boy or man, is ever alone when he follows the urgings of his inner voice. And neither are those whom he serves. The collective force of Kiwanis is often spent to bring the people of the community and their churches closer together. Perhaps that is because the inner man in all men must reach out beyond the everyday world to a truth which lies beyond, making contact with the God who has created us all. Alone? You are never alone. How can you be alone as long as someone cares for you, thinks of you, is lonely for you? True happiness can be found in sharing your time, your talents, your very existence with others. Thus in giving do we extend ourselves into the very roots of life itself. No man stands alone, for this is not his habit, and man is a creature of habit. The best gift that you have to give, and it is by far the most valuable, is the gift of yourself which is made up of your time, your talents, and your concerns. And you alone can give this gift. Before it is ready for the giving, you must cultivate it, as one cultivates a young plant. Adonai <laughs> darkecha Ungeni beorach nishor, ki imcha mekor chaim, beorcha nire or. The churches of a community are a hope for everyone who believes in the goodness of man and the eternal life of his soul. The church is the house of God, a place where all things appear in their true value. In a church, the inner man and the outer man come together in harmony to praise God, to exalt, to ask, to thank, to be alone where there is no loneliness. On the college campus, the Kiwana spirit is expressed in Circle K. And so a freshman who felt lost in the morning has by afternoon found a friend and begun the discovery of a new home. Because of Circle K, he has been drawn together with others. He is now not only among other men, he's a part of them. The world does keep some of its promises. A boy who thought that he was alone feels the contact of the kindness there was all around him at the time. He's at summer camp because there were men who recognized his need and did something about it. They did more than just dig down in their own pockets. They went out to the community to let the inner voices of every man respond to the need. Hi, a bag of peanuts for Kiwanis Kids Day. A bag of peanuts. How about you, sir? What's it for? Well, we have a children's camp, and we'll give you a bag of peanuts. How much do you want? Anything you want to give, sir, we'd be grateful. Who gets the money? The children right here in this town. It won't go anyplace else. Well, if it's for the children and it stays here, I'm for that. Thank you very much. Here's your peanuts. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Peanuts? Donation for... A boy who had thought that the world was made of brick, steel, concrete, and indifference learns about trees lined like legionnaires at the edge of a meadow. He learns about grass tall enough to tickle his elbows. He enjoys cool shade on a hot summer afternoon. And he meets person to person all the life that lies just beneath a blade of grass.
Here we go. Buy a bag of peanuts for Kiwanis Kids Day. Good peanuts. This Kiwanian and the boy may never meet, but that isn't important. Because of the other, each is less alone. I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country. For most boys in these times, there's no serious lack of privileges. But there remains a great need for training in citizenship, leadership, and self-reliance. The greatest threat to a modern community is that its boys will not grow up to be men of whom it can be proud. One of the oldest and, as we all remember fondly, the best ways of making a young man out of a small boy is to plunge him into the world of tenderfoot to eagle scout, marches and merit badges, as well as starting a fire without a match. All there is to say about scouting can be stated in these words. No man who ever was a scout can bear to think that his boy could not be. For all these reasons, hundreds of Kiwanis clubs sponsor Boy Scout troops and boys clubs in their communities. By precept and by example, building better citizens. Developing the character and guiding the vocations of our young people demands attention to both sides of future families by providing the opportunity for girls to learn the importance of joining together to reach a goal. Kiwanians, who are no better than any other men on feminine psychology, have a role to play in helping young girls understand the workings of business. It's inevitable when a man believes in individual citizenship responsibility that he will get into community politics where he'll have one of the best opportunities for service. Local politics is a natural expression of everything that Kiwanis stands for, especially the belief that when a man sees a problem, he should step in and do something about it on his own initiative. Mr. Chairman, I can summarize my position again by saying that I think this community should follow the example set by many others throughout the country that have provided for the fluoridation of their public water supply. Thank you, Mr. Creasy. Mr. Jessel? Mr. Chairman, it's been my position throughout this entire discussion this evening to support the use of fluoride. I see no other alternative but to continue to support this theory and the use of fluoride in the treatment of our water. Thank you, gentlemen, for your fine contribution. Now, I wonder if there are any questions from the audience. Judge Barrett. Mr. Creasy, I have heard that the use of fluorides affects the taste of water. Is that true? No, Judge, uh, it isn't true. The communities that have used fluoride in their water have found that there is, has been no appreciable uh, change in the taste of the water. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Mrs. Strymer. Mr. Jessel, isn't it possible that fluoride might poison our children? No, I don't believe there's any harm that can result from the use of fluoride. Presently, there are two schools of thought among members of the American Medical Association. One school believes in the use of fluoride in the treatment of water, and the other is opposed to it. And so the people are informed, and Kiwanis has served. We have heard from several of our Kiwanis Action Committees tonight, and now we're ready to hear from the International Relations Committee. Dick. President Sherm, this week we welcome back to Delaware two Ohio Wesleyan girls uh, as community ambassadors from Delaware to Finland and Turkey. The money that we contributed to this cause was raised by selling tickets at the fair. Later this year, the girls will present programs for the club. Thank you. Kiwanis is a force which draws men together in a world which often drives men apart. 
For this reason, it has always played an active role in international relations, bringing students to this part of the world for their studies, supporting the care program, or searching out foster parents for orphans on the other side of the earth. Kiwanis has begun to expand beyond the borders which gave it birth, reaching out across continent and ocean. The inner voices of men are the most powerful force in the world today. Because Kiwanians have this belief and act upon it, they have created a power which brings men closer together and which allows all men to give strength to others and to receive strength from others. In such activity is the dignity of a man, the strength of his nation, and the hope of the future. Of itself. No man stands alone.